This is an EV hiking J1772 to NEMA 515 or 520 outlet. It basically lets you pull 240 volts AC out of a J1772, like an electric vehicle charger. So this was sent to me to review for free. If you wanted to purchase it, it would cost you $40. They haven't paid me for my review, so my opinion remains my own. In the box, you get this adapter and absolutely no instructions. So it's a very simple adapter. It has a NEMA 520 outlet here, so you can plug in a standard 110 volt US household plug into this, or they have a special plug that's the 20 amp version of the plug. So theoretically, you can get up to 20 amps out of here. Now this cable is marked is 14 AWG. Um, so technically you're supposed to have 12 AWG to go to full 20 amps. So 14 AWG would be limited to 15 or 16 amps. Um, so that's probably fine. And here we have a J1772 inlet. Now this device is dangerous because most J1772 inlets will be giving you 240 volts AC. Only the level one chargers might be giving you 110 volts. Um, so generally, you're gonna be plugging this into something that gives you 240 volts. And it doesn't convert the voltage, it just gives you 240 volts out of a plug that's generally used for 110 volt devices. So it's only safe to use this with a device that is universal power supply that'll go you know, 100 to 240 volts or 250 volts AC. However, there are a lot of devices like that, um, especially there's a lot of battery chargers for electric bicycles, one wheels, things that you might take around, and maybe you want to charge from an EV charger. Um, and so if your charging system very specifically says it will work at 240 volts, then you can plug it into this and then plug this into a 240 volt source. So given that restriction, that this in no way meets US electrical code and you really should you know, not have an outlet like this that can give you 240 volts, but they're doing it anyways. Um, given that restriction, let's go test this and see how it works. So I have a EVSE, which is a relatively small one. It's plugged into a 240 volt circuit. This one delivers max 24 amps, um, so, but it is 240 volts. So when I plug that into this guy here, it clicks on and the charging light is flashing. So it is def definitely delivering power here. So let me get the multimeter out and check the voltage. I suspect it's gonna be close to 240. So yes, I'm verified. We got the 249 volts AC in this outlet here. So if you have a one wheel charger or an e-bike charger and it says input 100 to 240 volts AC, that would be acceptable to plug in here. And this guy's lit up and powered, ready to charge. So if you have a 110 volt level one EVSE that's plugged into a 112 volt circuit, that's the only way you would get 110 volts out of this guy. All right, so there we are, 123, my voltage is a little high here, but basically it's 120 volt out of this guy if it's plugged into a 120 volt source. Of course, if you got the 110, 120 outlet here, why are you bothering with this thing? Just plug into that. All right, this guy does what it's supposed to do in that it passes voltage through from your J1772 gun out to this outlet. Um, let's check how it does it and see if there's any safety things at all in here. My guess is it's passing the voltage straight through. There's maybe a resistor in there to say turn on the current um, and there's absolutely no overcurrent protection. But let's take a look and see what's inside. They have a washer and a lock washer and a nut holding this together so that mechanical connection is very nicely done. All right, so we have the ground hooked up to ground, and we have hot hooked up to L1, and neutrals hooked up to L2. 
We also have this wire connected directly here. It might have a resistor inside there. Um, and that's what turns on the current when you plug this in. There's also a zip tie in here wrapped around this guy. And I think that zip tie is the only thing that keeps this cable from being pulled out the end of this cable gland because this cable gland is, is much too big for that particular cable. And so I think the zip tie in there is the only thing keeping it pushing out. Now, wiring wise, it doesn't look horrible. Um, I haven't opened up this to see how well it's tightened in there, but it looks reasonable. The wiring looks to be 14 gauge wire. Um, so the only thing I think I would add to this inherently slightly dangerous device is a 20 amp fuse. If they had a 16 amp or a 20 amp fuse in here, I'd feel a little safer about it because if you plug a J1772 adapter hooked up to a 50 amp circuit, um, you know, it'll put 40 amps through this guy as long as whatever you have plugged in starts drawing that much current, it'll pull 40 amps through it. Um, there's nothing in here limiting the current. Um, and so having a fuse in there would make it slightly safer. On the other hand, you're already giving people a plug that they might expect to have a 120 volt outlet and it has 240 on it instead in most usage cases. So I think this is a case of as long as you use this guy correctly, it's perfectly safe. If you plug it into something that can't accept 240 volts or you plug it into something that draws more than the 16 amps that it's rated at, um, then you might have problems. So there's also no real waterproofing between this thing and here and you know this thing here I don't think it's going to keep water out so I wouldn't use this where you'd have it in a puddle I'd, I'd elevate it off the ground while using it if rain is likely. All right so putting this guy back on um, you can see there's that zip tie that they're kind of using to get this wire a little bit bigger here. It's holding it okay. Um, is it waterproof? It might be waterproof. You know, it, it's it's holding onto that cable pretty well there. Um, but it's, I think this cable is a little too small for that cable gland. Okay, so if you want to charge something that has lower current, you know, less than 16 amps, 12 amps preferably, off of a J1772 adapter, and it works at 230 volts, um, this adapter will work for you. So one thing I did that I kind of recommend you do too is you write 240 volts all over this sucker. So I put 240s, did cross hatching, I put some you know kind of danger snake ribbons on this thing just so if somebody picks it up and they don't are not familiar with it, they'll say, hey, there's something weird about this end. Oh look, why does it say 240? And then if they plug in a 110 volt device and it blows up on them, well that's kind of on them at that point.